<laughs> All star, but that ain't Dennis. <laughs> Mike, you told me to swing back to you. I'm swinging it back to you now. Yeah, so I just wanted to say this, man. <clears throat> I, I was I was on LBHT. I was well, I was in the in the in the chat, and I was I, I was throwing heavy shots at at Andy Reid. <clears throat> and I, I just want to say this about being enemy. I, I do think with Chris is, to Chris's point, I do think obviously he wanted that assistant or associate head coach t- tag and title. And it it makes sense that Baltimore, it, that's just us, that we wouldn't want to give him that, even <laughs> though, like, yo, that's all you want? All right. Like, you know, <laughs> it's yours. Yo. You got that. But I'm going to say this, right? First of all, they're talking about the enemy. You know, the narrative is, well, he had to get away from Andy. Mm-hmm. And – he wasn't calling plays and yada yada. We all knew that, but we already know two of his two of his former coaches got got jobs, and they weren't calling plays either. If that was the case, right? Mm-hmm. That's one thing. But my venom towards Andy Reid is Andy is one of the more respected head coaches in the league, right? <clears throat> so, what is he not saying? to these teams about Eric the enemy, mm-hmm. right? Because I feel like as a respected coach, two-time Super Bowl champion, won multiple games, then you, we know what he did in Philly. We know what he's doing in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. All it would take is a call from somebody like Andy Reid and saying, listen, this is a guy you want, right? Mm-hmm. Now, there's also a narrative out there that Eric the enemy suffers from the Patrick Ewing syndrome. And if that don't for you, For those that don't know that, or know what that is, back when Patrick was an assistant for the Knicks and everybody was like, man, why why isn't he getting a job? Why isn't he getting a head coaching job? And then there was a rumor surfacing that he interviewed poorly. He's not a good interview for whatever reason. That has also reared his ugly head with the enemy, that he's not a good interview. You skip an interview if Andy Reid puts a call in. Mm -hmm. Or if you're Andy Reid, and you hearing that this narrative about one of your assistants, you put that call in and say, listen, this is a guy that you want. So I'm starting to feel like Andy is not really co-signing EB like we think he is or would have. And also the fact that he didn't get a head coaching job and you and he leaves and he walks out of the door to take a basically a lateral move. Mm-hmm. Like it's something to that. And I'm starting to look and give the side out to Andy Reid and what's going on there and why would a respected coach like him, why, if you gave your word, why wouldn't be enemy not only had whatever OC job that he wanted, right? Especially Baltimore. We know Andy Reid and, and Harbaugh got, got a relationship. So that should have just been, hey, that should have been a call, text, whatever. Mm-hmm. Look, man, take make sure you get him, right? But not even that. With all the head coaching jobs he's interviewed for, you being the respected guy that you are, I just feel like a call from you would have gone a long way. So I'm a little shaky on that, even with the comments that Andy Reid made following the Super Bowl about Eric being to me. Yeah, through the light, you know, it looks like he was he was praising him, but it was still like it wasn't the – it just – because he, he, he had the little – he added the little thing at the end yeah, I hope somebody takes him and let him do his thing, right? Yep. So it's just to me, it was kind of shady. But- I, I I just feel like Andy, being who he is, a call or anything, if that's what he was doing, we wouldn't be having this discussion because I feel like he would have been a head coach a long time ago. But even when it came down to OC and a carousel or whatever's going on, one you wouldn't let him out the door if you knew he wasn't getting a head coaching job. Right. Mm-hmm. Two. You would have placed any call you needed to, especially right. to your buddy in Baltimore, and it would have been nothing. Take him, make sure you get him, and it's over. So I just wanted to say that about EB and all the narratives that's going on about him. Look look a little further than what's going on behind the scenes and what could be transpiring behind the scenes on those things. Hey, Mike. And, and, go ahead. Hand up. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, Mike. Yeah, I mean, those are excellent, outstanding points. But, Mike, you really think that just because Andy Reid called John Harbaugh, that he would listen to that? Like, well, you don't... 
I mean, I, 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 I'm with you on that, but it, I mean, I think that we've seen it happen before. Like, I'm, like, you don't think the Bears called Andy about Matt Nagy? Like, yes, hey, but, yeah. Matt, but and now, Matt, his, and now his word is dirt around these parts. All right, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and, Matt, and Matt Nagy is now the offensive coordinator in Kansas City once again. Right. So, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it just looks a little shady there, right? If you you hit your two times Super Bowl winning. Offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. right? And like I said, okay, he's not going to get a head coaching job. He got passed by. Oh, well, you got a job here. You're here. You're not going anywhere. I'm going to let you spread your wings if it's going to be a promotion. I, but I, the I, fact that he walks out the door with his ladder removed like that, it's just it's just a little odd to me. So I, I'm, I'm done with putting it on EB and all of this and halfway oh. buying into some of these narratives that maybe he – because even myself, I was like, man, maybe maybe he's just not a great interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some people though. aren't, but so t- but go ahead, go ahead, though. I'm sorry, two things. So, I look at it like this is how I look at it. Um, I'm gonna liken this to lunch break hot take discord. So, right. every Uh-oh. no, Uh-oh. no, no, not that, not that part, not that part. So, what part? So, for, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm you know, perception is reality. So, I'm gonna say, for over the last, I'm gonna say, three or four months, you know, I'm saying myself. Dave on a couple of other people. We've been in the chat telling Danity, you love this so much, hop over to the Discord. But her perception about the internet is I would like to sign up, but I don't trust putting my credit card information into a site. So doing that research, man. It's just taking a little while. I understand. <laughs> so the same thing with Eric the Enemy, with all of the failed attempts or pseudo attempts for him to get a job. Perception is reality, and they perceive him to be maybe not ready for certain positions. But I think something that I heard uh, this dude on one of them shows say, I'm not going to mention his name, but he said, listen, one of the things and one of the reasons why some of these black guys don't get head coaching jobs is because these these old white owners don't want to have dinner with these black guys and their wives. They don't want to have to have functions where they invite them over to their homes with these people. Wow. And we already, and a lot of us know, Eric, the enemy isn't that let me put on my representative voice and pretend to be right and pretend to be somebody else. So some of these owners don't want to partake in a lot of those things. And Andy Reid was the one who told Eric, the enemy, you need to go somewhere else to get away from me so that you can show what you can do. I'm not saying that Andy <laughs> Reid is is the guy that's actually promoting or, or did everything that he could do. But I think it has more to do with the rest of the NFL more than it does the Kansas City Chiefs because our enemy was on five one-year deals. Yeah. And there was friction between him and some of the players, not to say all of that BS that they were talking about. It was a little bit of friction. At any time, Andy Reid could have been like, yo, you causing discord up in here in this team, you got to go. But he kept him. Mm-hmm. And once he realized he wasn't getting a head coaching job, he said, bro, you got to step back and do your own thing, assemble your own staff and be, and show you are your own man. Because no matter how many times I go in the interview and say, yo, he called the plays. He's the reason we won the Super Bowl. Listen, if you look we at don't it, believe it, if you look at it, we ran the ball. When do I call run plays? <laughs> That's how crazy you- is. Look at that compared to, you know, uh, you know, another coach, current head coach in the league. Uh, Josh McDaniels, who hmm. already failed at being a head coach, he showed that he was terrible at being a head coach and quit. Um, and, and then gets an OC outside of New England, too. Yep. Yes, he quit. yeah, quits on a team. Well, no, no, not just you know, worse than that, he took the job with the Colts and quit, and then and and then just didn't. No, no he didn't quit, he didn't show Bobby up, but he didn't show up. Quit. Well, okay, he, <laughs> he, didn't, he, did, he did, he did, he did, he had the press up. conference, and didn't he, show didn't, up. he didn't have the press conference that they they, they, they set scheduled. up the press conference, they scheduled it, and he just like, yeah, I'm not going. I hired the staff and everything, just left them <laughs> high and dry without telling them. That should I thought that was a kiss of death. I didn't think he was going to get another head coaching job after that, yeah, but here we are. That, that should have been it, but. Then you have another owner that takes a that takes a chance on him. Owner already wants him gone, but you know, he's a broke boy, so he can't afford up to to pay out his contract. So so he's there. So now you have in in, in Vegas, you have a head coach that the team does not want. The owner does mm-hmm. not want him. And what does he do when he gets there? He takes somebody in Derek Carr who was on the upswing, who just got a brand new contract, who everybody started to consider one of the one of the better quarterbacks in the league, has one of his worst years, and mm-hmm. now he's out of here. Yep. Right. But he is still a head coach. But exactly. Airbnb has to be perfect. He has to be perfect in order to get a head coaching job. The best he can do is 
assistant head coach in Washington. Like I, I hate to bring this up, but and we and I think most most of us on here got kids. And I and I told my boys and my daughter, it's just the the way of the world. We have to be two to three times better than the next yeah. people to yeah. get ahead to get the same yeah. thing. And it, it's crazy. But Mike, I I really like your your point, and I, I, I there's some validity to it because coaches. Owners call coaches the respected coaches and say, what do you think about this? That's how um, Bill Belichick effed up and co- and congr- congratulated um, Flores. Yep. Because owners call the respected coaches and be like, hey, what do you think about X, Y, Z? That's how Belichick knew before anybody else knew because of your point. The respected mm-hmm. – and Andy Reid's one of those respected coaches. Belichick is Andy Reid um, – I, at, before this year, it probably was um, Tomlin, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But it, it, it's few that they all reach out to and, and try to get their opinion on guys. And Belichick's definitely one of them guys. And that's how you, that's, that puts some validity to your point that Andy may not have called him and said, hey, he's that guy. Right. I, I mean, I, I just think I just think Andy saying that bypasses any interview. Mm-hmm. You I know what I mean? I, I, I hear what you're saying, Mike, but, you know, Jerry Jones just came out publicly told you these interviews don't matter. They hired the people that they know. And and regardless of what, what Andy Reid says, they don't know Eric B. Enemy and they don't want to know Eric B. Enemy. And and, uh, and 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 I agree I agree with Hendo's point. I think that plays a I think that plays a factor in it too, right? But here's a guy like, you know, I mean, how, how many plays has Mike Kafka? called <laughs> Kafka whatever his name is you know what I mean yeah. like you know Matt Nagy wasn't calling the plays before he got hired so it's just you you what happens in this league as well is you poach you look at a team and you say and that's why we wanted Eric B in because we look at Kansas City and we just say damn what would it be if we had an offense that looked like that All right the same right? thing with the candidates we wanted like the Stowers kid from San Francisco exactly Anybody from San Francisco, mm-hmm. anybody from the uh, Philly, mm-hmm. you know, even even last year was in the la- the the last year and the year before was anybody from the Rams. Right, we'll take anybody. Let, we want, let us we mess around and that. be successful next year, Mike. Yeah, monkey gonna be gone. Yeah, <laughs> and so and so, I'm I, I'm just I, I'm I, I just got I'm not saying you know I just got a side eye on that situation. I just feel like Andy is that guy gotcha. right now. Right. And if he if he said that, you know, hey, bro, man, you, you look, man, you don't want to pass up on this guy. Trust me. And I think that's why Josh McDaniels continues to get a job because they call the hoodie and the hoodie's like, yo, listen, man, this guy, even <laughs> even if he's stretching it a little bit. This time bit, it'll work. This time it'll work. Man. <laughs> right. That, that, that's his man. So he probably saying, look, man, his track record speaks for itself. Look, you, get, you put him in this situation, it'll work. So it's just it's just it's just odd that he has to go through jump through these hoops to prove it's, that he's calling plays to do all of this and you got one of the more respected head coaches and it's not taking you but you taking everybody else on his staff though. You taking people around him, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? People that's under Eric B enemy, they're getting promotions, but Eric B enemy is not. But it's just weird. But there ain't no black people under Eric the Enemy. Like you, you saying, you know, it's weird. And, and I agree, just on the surface, it's weird, right? But like you said, it's it's hey, give me anybody who who has ever even made eye contact with Sean McVay. I'm hiring that guy, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, both both Philly coordinators got hired, and they were and people were trying to hire the quarterback coach too, right? Mm-hmm. But Byron Leftwich wins the Super Bowl, and you know, now granted, you know, he 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 could have had the job in Jacksonville. Except he said, "Hey, I want it this way," and they said, "No, get the hell out!" Right? And he goes back, he gets fired, and nobody's even talking to him for yeah. anything. Yeah. Right? You got Eric Bieniemy; he's won two Super Bowls, a top five offense every year, and nobody wants him. Like that's beyond the interview. Like it, that's the hey, it doesn't matter like how good you are at your job. You are not the kind of person that I want in this role for me. Because like we, we talk about a lot, these teams aren't out there doing everything it takes to win. You know, they're like they're not going all out to win, not everybody. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of teams that look at Airbnb and say, hey, you know, maybe maybe that would be a, a big upgrade for us. Don't care, don't want it. That I mean, all of you guys are making 
uh, <laughs> your points are, are are all true and they all make sense. But I just I, I just can't get over that side of it, right? Mm-hmm. Now if you if you go back to Eric B enemy before they won a chip, you know, when they was they was making it to the, the conference championship games and stuff like that. And you're like, man, this guy, you know, Eric B. Enemy is a guy under him, you know, maybe. And I could, I could see them saying, ah, but man, this man didn't won two Super Bowls. He's coming off of a Super Bowl. And then I just can't, I can't let the fact go <clears throat> that, you know, also, I, 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 you didn't get promoted. I'm not letting you leave this building either. We just won chips. Yep. So why, yep. you know, like, why am I not? Like Hendo said, he on one year deals. Why am I not making you the highest paid <laughs> offensive right. coordinator around? I'm keeping I'm, cause, you here because I want you to stand on your own two feet and succeed. <laughs> but 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 well, I'm not. No, nah, and I I get that. But so his excuse. I'm sorry. His excuse was I only kept him on one year deals in case he got a head coach. Just in case he could move, right? Right. And 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 I get that. But Andy can say I haven't personally heard Andy. With true conviction, say that man is running this offense. Right. I don't think it's nonsense anyway because you can have on a, a ten year deal if he if he leaves. I mean, that's coaching job. You know what I'm saying? Like you just you, you just, just leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying you're you're wrong about Andy Reid, Mike. Because yeah, like he he did say he's calling the plays. This is offense, but yeah, I mean it wasn't. Enthusiastic, I don't think the two of them get along. I, I don't, you don't, and, like, I, and that could like, be, and I, I, and I, yeah, I think it's heading, is, treading it's, that way. Yeah, it's you know, regardless of whether or not Andy Reid endorses you to another team, at some point, somebody's gonna hire the offensive coordinator for the best offense of the past five years that's won two Super Bowls and been to three, right? You know, so it, it can't just be. And he's not, you know, doing that. And 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 listen, like I said, I'm not saying you're wrong. He may not be. He may be out there trying to, trying to, you know, talking bad about him, you know, throwing shade at him or whatever. But at some point, somebody's gonna say, you know what, man, like his offenses are too good, and I'm about to hire Jonathan Gannon. So let me call <laughs> <laughs> and see what's up. <laughs> but but my bad, coach, to, to derail it. You're but good. You know, I, I just that's good. That's, you know, good. that's that was a good, good segment. It it needs to be said. Some good stuff said in it, so <laughs> it needs to be said. Let's um jump back into these super chats. Uh, uh, we just got a ten. says, "Do we need less record to have a more explosive offense?" I, and I put in the chat when he first put it in there. Heck, freak, yes. yes. <laughs> y'all, y'all can un, you know narrate that and translate it what what it means. Chris, what you think? Of course, I mean. What like a fullback and explosive? It doesn't go together. <laughs> we Hendo. tried it though. Hendo. Yeah, we need to get him. We need to get him at all the team. We listen year after year. We are close to the salary cap, and we all really have to sit back and like, who are we paying? Who are we paying seven million dollars to a fullback? Mm. And and listen. I understand if you felt the need in the year of our Lord 2023 to deploy a fullback. If his name isn't Yuschek, why do you have him? Yeah, because he's explosive. I give him that much. But yeah, Pat Ricard, 300 pounds, self. Like we don't need him in today's NFL. You can do tackle. The, the, only, the only game Pat Ricard stood out to me was versus the Patriots when he kept bull dog and Matt Judon. Other than that, anybody else could have any tight end could have did what he did because that was personal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, drop it down to, uh, and then we're going to kind of cut them in half. Brandon says, uh, Ricard going to be cut. 